So, you want to get good at putting. First, you got to organize your backyard so stuff isn't just everywhere. Second, you need a basket. Luckily, I have one of those. Thanks to my dad. We'll put that right there. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. That's where I'm going to be putting from. Nine, 10, 11. So 11 is about circle's edge. It's not the best math, but it's good for ballpark and stuff. A little over 20, 20 feet. So you need a basket, you need putters, more the better. I got four of my main ones that I practice putt with. I got two of the, um, the Royal Sense Daggers and a couple Zero Hard ones. They feel very nice. I like the feel of the Royal Sense a little more. They're a little more like... Chalky, chalky. And the Zero Hard, like they're a little more... A little more slick. Like they still feel good, but not as good as the others. But these are my four that I like. I like white putters, very clean. The next part, the next secret of doing or becoming a better putter or putting well is um, practicing. I know it's a shock, but you want to get good at putting, you're going to need to practice. So practicing, you're going to pick a distance that you're comfortable with and you're going to practice that even if it's something as silly as I should. And I probably am going to move this even closer. Even if you're five feet, like if this is uncomfortable to you and you get into a tournament and you think that like, oh man, I really don't want to miss these. Just, just practice those putts, dude. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to putt a hundred times. I got four putters. I want a hundred putts, ideally made putts. Um, but we're going to see how long it takes. It's 25 sets of four putts each. So I'm at 20 feet here. I think I'm gonna actually scoot this forward just a little bit because I don't feel like 100% from there, but like, what, I'm moving it four feet forward or so. So I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so yeah, about four feet closer than where I just was. But I feel like this is a really good, like these are putts that are, you get up to these and these aren't necessarily gimmies because there's still all that airspace for the disc to travel, but they're also like, you should be at a high percentage of these. So really, <laughs> you just, see even right there, I didn't uh, open my hand. That's another, wow, these are not so great. I'm not counting this set, by the way. This is just more, I guess, for demonstration purposes. But I think, I mean, even just in that, it's not a mindless putt for myself. For you, if it's mindless for you, fucking awesome. For me, I know this is something I need to practice. I've been practicing, but I need to practice more. And the more reps I get in, the better. Um, I was, I'm at the stage where I'm trying to get as many reps in as I can but also I'm trying to move into as many reps as I can that are made reps um, to try to really find the, uh, the dialed in putt. So I need a way. So we're going to do this. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to use my calculator on my phone to track how many sets I've done. And oh, maybe do Maybe do a couple other little things. I'll just, here seems fine. So, um, another bonus tip that I actually have besides actually practicing is commit to your putt, which basically means like open your hand. And I say that because I have a problem with that. And uh, when I get timid, I tend to just use like my fingers and my thumb kind of trails behind. So I get like this thing. I just, I call it potato hand. 
um, just because it feels bad and gross and potato kind of <laughs> fits that for me. But um, I try to get my left leg loaded and just use your left leg to push and then open your hand and have your thumb pop up. Another step if you want to take it. Uh, I find that I putt better, um, not only being able to consistently do those things, but when I'm looking at a chain, I know some people look at maybe the whole basket as a whole. Other people, maybe they look at a certain like cha whole chain link or I don't know, like I, I think one link is actually one link here, but they either look at one whole chain row um, or they look right at the pole or they looked at the look at the pole left like those side chains or right side whatever works for them for me i literally pick one chain link and i try to keep it center and then depending on wind or how i'm putting i'll go one chain link left or right but i start basically dead center chain link from left to right and top to bottom, maybe one link up and one link down. And when I do change, if I'm going higher or lower, I go link by link. I don't go three links up or five links up. That's to me, that's way too much. So I pretty much start dead center and I focus on that and I don't break focus until the putt is complete. Not, not necessarily like the release, but all the way through, following through. And I think part of that follow through is that focus staying all the way through. So anyways, that's kind of the couple things that I have. We're gonna do a hundred putts, see how long it takes. It's 8.10 right now. And uh, we're just gonna get going. And I might do more because maybe some sets aren't so good and I wanna get more, like I wanna have more made than not. Not a not a great great start. Wow, that is uh see for me I'll count it. I think that just means I'm gonna at least do one extra set. That's more or less a warm-up set to try to get the feel of things, get in the groove of it. And should be getting better along the way. Good set. Feels a lot better, a lot more natural. And really, a hundred putts is a lot, but at the same time, it's not gonna take you long to do. I don't know, like, you're getting a hundred reps in, ideally a hundred made reps, and Personally, I think there's more benefit in feel, like if you make 100% of your putts, but only 50% of them felt good, that means the other 50 got lucky. And sometimes it's better to be lucky than good or whatever. But personally, I feel like I would rather make only 50, but all 100 actually felt good. Because when they feel good, you actually you have a better, like your release was good, it was just for some reason, something was a little off and you can tweak that. So versus 50 that accidentally went in. So I would much rather have a hundred putts feel good how they should be. It was just, maybe I gave it a little too much or not enough. Um, but every single time I'm pushing with my leg and opening my hand and not only springing my hand open, but my thumb is kind of my main focus. If I think about springing my thumb open, the rest of my hand follows, but I can open my hand and use just my fingers, but that's not ideal and that's not allowing everything to get into the disc. So if I can get my thumb open into it, to me, everything else is gonna follow. Um, that's kind of my thinking about it.
I think another important thing too, I think with a lot of sports, creativity is a huge part of it. But in part of that creativity, having the ability to almost literally see the shot that you're trying to make actually happen. Because if you can't see it, it's really hard, I, for myself at least, to commit to that shot. What be it a putt, drive, um, up shot, really anything. That was a bad one. I did not. There's two of those I didn't open my hand. I didn't, I didn't push very much and uh, I didn't open my hand. And to me, I need to add the last two sets and I'm probably gonna do a couple more because I'm not super happy with those. I think another thing I got as I'm doing this and thinking about it more is learning how to also feel the distance. So there's no sense in really like loading up this putt and giving it 50, per, like 50 feet of power if you're 20 feet away. Because if you do miss, because it's bound to happen, you're gonna miss here and there. Um, but ideally giving it the best chance of going in. But if and when you do miss, there's no sense in giving it 50 per, or 50%, 50 feet of power on a 20 foot putt, where in theory, you're gonna be going 30 feet past. There is a way to do it where you're giving it 20 feet of power, maybe 25 feet of power for a 20 foot putt. Like you're not trying to drill the basket, but you're not trying to fluff it in there. You're trying to learn for you what the, kind of appropriate power is and in doing that I think you learn how to uh that was a good point I, I count that as made even though the basket didn't do its job in terms of practice putting I threw a good putt but in terms of just learning your putt and learning your power that's just another form of control that you have on your putt so if and when you do need to adjust when you get a little more advanced in your putt or certain winds or whatever it is, you can do that kind of stuff. So. That was a lucky putt. That one's a little lucky. And first one was lucky just for the fact that I didn't really open my hands so I didn't fully commit and it still made its way in there. The other one, which is another point that I'll make too, is <laughs> as I'm doing this, I'm like coming up with more things. So this is, this is probably another aspect I wasn't thinking about that would actually be good in helping me practice. But something else that has helped me is you're putting momentum on the disc. Now, I don't know how easy it is to see from that angle, but if you're putting a straight line into the disc and then you release the disc in a momentum where it's straight into the pole, say, even if the disc starts like on a hyzer angle or anhyzer angle and it's still trapped, like that momentum is traveling forward, there, I, to me, there's a higher chance of the basket and chains doing its job of catching it versus you're throwing a straight line, but it's a little, like, it's a little crooked. So if you kind of think of it, uh, I don't know the best way, like, you can go straight into, like if you look at the chains on the right side of the pole and the outer chain, the disc can still go straight in momentum wise. But if it's at an angle a little bit, there's a bigger chance of the disc kind of ricocheting off and not catching. So I don't know, hopefully that makes sense. But to me, that's something I try to keep the disc in a forward, like a straight momentum into it and not kind of come at it like, as I finish, pull it off to the right or keep it going to the left. I try to keep it, the momentum straight through the chains. Like even if it's going to the left side of the pole, it's hitting that cluster of chains and it, the momentum going straight versus it's glancing to the left.
See that one? <laughs> I pulled that one off to the right. And then I overcompensated and then I just fluffed it to the left. Instead of just, <laughs> instead of just over, uh, instead of just doing the same putt and committing, I just compensated for having thrown a bad putt. But you learn, live and learn. Commit, see the shot, commit, open your hand. That one's a little lucky, but use your legs some. Using your legs will make it that much easier instead of just using your arm. You'll be able to get the disc there much easier. That did not, I let that one fall out of my hand. Hi. But overall, they're feeling really good. Not super primo where I was at with uh, when I was putting really, really well. Um, I don't know, at this point, a couple years ago, but I know it's still there. I know I still have the uh, body memory of it. It's just getting those reps. The, the good reps. That was bad. That one was a nose down one. And then see, I compensated by throwing it higher. <laughs> I believe that is 15 sets, roughly. That was one of those ones where, instead of getting the momentum straight this way, I, the momentum was coming at an angle like this. So, I don't know, even if I got more into the chains, I really don't think that would have made it. And if it did, that would have been a luckier putt rather than a good putt. Not bad, not bad. Lucky. That one I did not. I'm sure in the video you can see that one. I didn't put anything forward. That was just a, <laughs> that was some lofty, lazy bullshit that I just did right there. Yeah. All right, that one's a little high, but that's in. I'm not upset with that. Left side, but forward momentum. What else do we got? Is there anything else that I don't know what that was, but that was not a good putt. That was a 100% lucky putt. Putt.
There we go. Open, I was getting lazy with the opening my hand, which is, in my opinion, my biggest problem. When I tend to mess up my putting, I don't know, that is the one thing I need to focus on is just opening my hand, which allows me to pop my hand open, which allows all the momentum to go right to my disc, and I need to learn on not even necessarily just trusting that, just trusting myself to do that. So that one was a good feeling putt. It was just an off angle. I think there's a lot there to think about, but at the same time, I think it's relatively minimal. Like, they're just tweaks here and there. I think at least one person can um, relate to the same issues that I'm having and the things that I'm working on. Um, that was lucky. That was momentum going a little left, not necessarily straight. Lucky that it dropped down like that, but anyways. So the one that missed, I would count that as a miss because I hit that up here with a lot of momentum, which is more or less how it works in my head. Just like this, the left side is gonna glance off and go left and this will glance right. This essentially glances down and the chains almost instantly push the disc back because they reach tension super fast and just will smack it down right there. So it was a good feeling putt, it was just, too high. All right. All right, that one was the elusive potato hand, but not so elusive, the uh, dreaded is a better word. So we're definitely gonna do some bonus sets. We're at 22 sets. Maybe a couple more, but that's okay. The more the better. And that was a great putt. Another good one. Another good one. Another thing I was thinking about there's a lot coming to me, but I feel like with a lot of other players who have their putt relatively dialed or know their putt well, have the ability that as soon as you throw your putt, and if it's, there's like a couple stages to it, once you throw your putt, you can determine whether you threw a good putt, like a good feeling putt, and then once that, if and when that's checked off, you can then almost guess with high probability whether you made the putt or not. Um, and that comes with the comfortability of the distance that you're putting from. Um, I feel like for sure, basically anyone or everyone who is wanting to get better at disc golf and become a better putter, once you get to being able to be comfortable at working on your 20 foot putts, 20 to 25 foot, whatever this is, you will have a really good ability to know one, when you have thrown a good putt, and two, whether you've made that putt or not before it's even come close to the basket. And I, at least for myself, more times than not, especially when I'm really dialed into my putt, I can guess with high probability. And I'm right more times than not. And it's not a gloating thing, it's just you are connected with your putt and how your game is, what your game is, and what it is you're trying to do and matching the outcome of your release to what you're seeing in your head. Um, so I don't know, like I think that's a, that's a good goal I think to kind of strive for as well when it comes to putting better. So I'll try to start calling them out. Like that's good. That's good. Good. 24 sets right now. 
And I'm probably gonna do five more sets is, is the goal. Good. Good. Nope, not good. Good. Lucky. That last one was short-armed. This one, the one that I caged, <laughs> I think I called, I tried calling way too early because I was, I don't know, I got a little cocky, I guess. Because as soon as I said good, and then actually in my head I answered, <laughs> I knew it was gonna be low, but whatever, that's okay. That's 25 sets, we're gonna do at least, at least five more. We're gonna really, really try to focus up on these ones. Good. Good. Good, yeah. Good. Good. Lucky. Good. Another one that I've heard tip wise when putting is essentially you're throwing a one pound weight or like a textbook or something. If you're going to go throw a textbook onto like, like at your buddy to catch or whatever, I think sometimes people can get too caught up in the, in the flight of the disc and like all this S turn and whatever. I mean, sure. After a certain distance, there's going to be enough air time for the disc to start you're gonna have to start guessing engaging and actually throwing like i don't know if you're gonna go try to putt like a 60 foot putt or more um, depending on how you putt you're gonna have to give it more everything more height more speed more spin uh, maybe more of an s turn uh, there's all sorts of different variables um, but when it comes to in my opinion distances from uh, at least to the basket to here also from the basket to edge of circle one, 33 feet, you can have enough power and control in the disc that the disc is essentially gonna go from you to the distance of the basket in essentially a straight line. Um, so uh, if you're thinking of just throwing a one pound weight, the weight isn't really gonna move or alter. So if you just think about, I'm just throwing a weight, how is that weight going to fly rather than a disc or lid frisbee whatever you want to call it that one came out of my hand a little funny not actually entirely sure why that one is just maybe not committed all the way not too sure. Out of here, mosquitoes. Doing at least the last one here. Excellent. That's 30 sets. So we'll do 30 times four. That's 120 putts. We're gonna do one more. One more for good measure. Cause why not? Yeah. Do those feel those feel so good. So 124 putts, maybe slightly more actually thrown. I'm not sure how many I actually made, so I don't know what my percentage is, but I would say comfortably at least 50% of those I made. Um, I missed some, not that many, more than I would like though. I would like to be in, in that distance. I don't know, probably like 90% easily i would like to be in 90 percent from here um really i think the only reason that i would 
want, not want to be missing, but the only reason I would like to have for missing these putts is I misread the wind or like just something wild happened. Like the basket didn't do its job of catching the disc or I maybe putted it a little too hard. Um, but even still, ideally, like I want to be making, if I actually had a hundred daggers that felt great, I'm making at least 90 of them in there. Um, so with that being said, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to try to do a bonus little something. I got this, this little card game and I'm going to pick one at random here and I'm going to answer it for myself. Normally it's for others, uh, to work on like communication and getting to know one another and stuff like that. It's a, it's a fun little game. So I'll give it a couple little shuffles. We'll cut right here and then we'll flip the top one here. So what is a moment in our relate? Oh wait. Okay. I don't know if I can answer to this one. <laughs> what is a moment in our relationship that you felt undeniably loved? Um, well, it's you guys and I don't know. I feel loved anyways, but I want to, I want to actually answer one. Um, that's good. What do you crave more of? Um, honestly, it's, more disc golf in my life. Life has been tough all throughout, uh, especially uh, as a like these last 10 years in total has been um, wild. And most definitely the last couple years, um, I lost my mom during COVID, had to move. Family tensions have been very, wound very tight. So there's there's just been a lot going on. And honestly, I haven't, disc golfed as much as I normally have. So I kind of crave it more. Um, currently I'm working at Amazon and it's good money. It's not something that I want to be doing uh, long term, but as of right now, it's good money. Uh, I get to work by myself. I have little interaction with my bosses, which isn't bad. And I get out at a decent time. I get done roughly done and home roughly by 5, 5.30 at the latest usually. And especially during springtime right now, like it's almost nine. I, I meant to look at the time to see how long it actually was to actually do these hundred odd putts. But I've let a lot of things get in my way of disc golfing and keep and really honestly just talking myself out of doing a lot of things. Uh, even doing this video here, um, we went to go see the new Fall Guys movie, and then we went to uh, downtown Rochester at La Puma's, which has really good, they've been there since I believe the 50s or have been there for over 50 years. They're really good, so if you know what I'm talking about or from the area, definitely check them out. Anyways, on the drive home, I was in mentally just going back and forth, like, I really wanna do this, uh, but it's late, and we still gotta work out and do an ice bath and blah, 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 and this and that and whatever, and then, well, no one's gonna watch the video and yada, yada, yada. And really just like <laughs> internally trying, so I don't even understand why, but just really trying to talk myself out of it for whatever reason. So instead of letting myself do that, I just instead just threw on my mic, grabbed my camera, set it up and just started talking, which was kind of my idea is I wanna just start doing things. And also why listen to me? Um, in terms of disc golf uh, tips and tricks or this and that and whatever. I'm not anyone special in the sport, but I think I throw the disc well. Um, I used to be sponsored by Latitude, was sponsored by Westside, um, a couple other smaller sponsors from the local area, one of them being Disc Baron, who's an amazing guy. So if you're watching this, Jacob, shout out to you for everything you did. And I'd love to talk to you sometime, maybe in the future if something works out. Uh, maybe in some future content creation. Part of why I'm doing this is I want to do something. I want to give back to the sport that has given me a lot of joy and happiness um, and in showing me that I'm like, I typically am pretty good at fucking, 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 fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. I was fucking awesome. Fucking, fucking, fucking awesome. Fucking, fucking, fucking awesome. I was, I was fucking awesome. I was, I was fucking awesome. Here seems fucking awesome. Uh, 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 uh.
Grip it tight, aim it right Release it with all your might Watch it soar, higher than before One perfect throw, let's win this fight Keep your form, don't get torn Snap your wrist, feel it twist Visualize, focus your eyes Mental game, strong, don't resist Straight your lines, perfect finesse Find that spot, you know the address Power drives, go in the distance Precision shots, avoid the mess Throwing this with Zach It's the perfect day in the sunshine Watching them fly, don't you dare look away He's the master, the golfing, showing us the way Teaches us the technique Step by step, so we can play Gather round, listen close He's got something to say Hold that disc with the grip that won't stray Wind up and release, just follow his sway Watch it soar and curve, we're learning the right way this golf delight, we're flying high Zach's teaching us, reaching for the sky This golf delight, we're loving the game With Zach by our side, we'll never be the same Zach's teaching style isn't just about imparting knowledge, it's about empowering. Don't you dare look away. Here seems fucking awesome.